There's been a lot going on in the makeup industry in terms of launches, so I've had a lot of PR that I've been really wanting to play with that I've been put to the side. So today, I'm pulling out this new-ish PR. Some of the stuff is newer than others, but just stuff that I've been wanting to play with. So let's get down and dirty with all the new makeup. Hair is ready, skin is ready, let's go. So to start off, I received this in an Ipsy glam bag. This is a Too Faced Lip Injection <laughs> Extreme. This is an old product not new at all but I've been seeing people on TikTok using this to plump the lip and it's supposed to be pretty intense. I've had a lip injection back in the day uh, from Too Faced, not a real one, <laughs> years ago but I figured let's Let's try it again in 2022. Times are different now. So let's see if this hurts. I'm not really super sensitive to these. But okay, time's a ticking with this. We'll see if it plumps in my lip nicely before I put on lip products by the end of this. It's starting to sing. Okay, this is one that I can't believe I haven't tried this out because I've been really wanting to. This is from Shantikai. This is the Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint. A lot of you asked for me to review it. So let's see. I don't know exactly how much coverage it's supposed to apply. I don't know. I'm just really interested overall. I don't know what the point of this is. So we're going to find out together. Okay, so this is... This is how it looks. It's like a light sheer pink color. I'm gonna do just a little bit to see what happens. It's called a face tint, so I wasn't sure if it provided any coverage, but it really doesn't. I feel like it looks good kind of as a base, right? Because my skin now has that pretty, it's a rosy tint, it's not a skin tone tint. I wasn't sure if it was supposed to, I don't know, kind of blend in and add coverage or anything. I don't know what I was expecting, but it gives a really pretty sheer, glowy, rosy skin tint, which actually is really pretty under makeup. Shonda Kai is so pricey. I really don't want their products to be good, <laughs> but dang, everything they do is really, really good. I would say always wait for their sales, but this gave such a pretty rosy, sheer, a sheer glow rose tint to the face. The name is very true to how it looks. And I feel like it's gonna look so pretty with just some concealer if you just want a glow because it doesn't look sparkly or anything to, wow. This is beautiful. This looks so nice. I've been using the Fenty Eavesdrop Skin Tint. This is so much better than the Fenty. I love the way that this looks. And it's really hydrating because Shanta Kai has amazing skincare. My skin really loves their skincare, unfortunately. Very pricey. Yeah, this feels like a great skincare item as well. And it's gonna leave your skin looking so glowy throughout the day. We're a fan of that. <laughs> we are. Now for coverage today, I've been meaning to pull this out. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Palette. I'm really excited about this. So Camera Ready Cosmetics sent this to me and I think it is so versatile, amazing for makeup artists. I'm no longer really doing clients anymore, but if I was, I would totally use this. And I'm gonna try and create a really light coverage foundation on my skin. So what I'm gonna do is I have a spatula and a little palette, and I'm gonna mix up the colors all together. But this just looks so nice, so I want to get to know the textures of these a bit. So I'm gonna mix mostly this shade, and then I'm gonna add a little extra warmth with this shade right here. And I'm just gonna do that on my palette just in case I decide to use this in my makeup kit. I don't think I will, but just in case. I don't really want too much coverage because I love the glow that this Shantikai product is giving. It does turn out to be pretty creamy, so let's get the point of my face that needs some coverage, which is everywhere apparently. <laughs> but definitely the cheeks the most. So I'm gonna pack on the most products here. It's mostly the center of my face that needs coverage. The outer part, we can live without. Okay, that feel really nice and creamy. I like that. And then I'm gonna use a sponge. This is just a little elf sponge to work it out. I'm gonna try a brush on the other side, but I honestly probably could have even used less product. I said I was going for light coverage, but here we are. This is blending out so nice. Oh my goodness, if you do clients at all, this is 
perfect even if you're not like a very active makeup artist and you don't do makeup all the time this makes it even more perfect because it's so nice and tiny it looks really good I'm gonna use it for concealer as well when we get there I'm just gonna use my rare beauty dirty foundation brush that desperately needs clean and I'm gonna push this into the skin I actually think I kind of prefer the sponge for this one but this is still doing a really good job my skin looks really beautiful right now I think it's that mixture of the light layer of the makeup forever which is a cream and having that Chantecaille rose tint peeking through making a little extra on my palette that I have left putting it on the cheek I think it looks really nice right it looks quite natural very pretty okay so we'll come back to the face it's time for me to move on to eyebrows benefit just launched this gimme brow volumizing pencil this is brand new from the brand and what's interesting is it has fibers in it kind of like the Jones Road Beauty so we'll see what it does to my brows I'm excited I have this shade neutral medium brown so I like that there is a spoolie at one end and it is a sharpenable style pencil I'm gonna come closer brush the brows up let's see okay okay we're gonna brush down so it doesn't give me super precise hair like strokes just given the nature of the larger pencil itself but for it being slightly larger than what I'm used to size wise it still is quite maneuverable and pretty easy to use and it's not thick and sticky like I feel like the Bobbi Brown can be it does have a drier consistency so it glides through the brows I definitely need to clean up a little bit I usually do when I'm getting used to a new brow pencil but this looks pretty nice I don't really notice any fibers or anything or any extra volume added to the brows i'm gonna have to use it more to really be able to tell if it made a difference or not i think but i do like how the pencil feels it feels better than most of the pencils that i've used that are similar to this i'm gonna quickly throw on a brow gel that i have and clean up on the under brows and i'll be back and we'll actually get straight into the eye makeup okay so purple of course for the eye look this was the reason i pretty much did this video because i really wanted to test out the new Kaleidos eye quads. They also launched some multi-chrome eyeliners. I don't see how I could get those to work in today's look, but I'm definitely using these quads because they are purple. So this is from their new Night of Creations collection. Look at these. So we have more of like a cooler gray toned purple and then a brighter purple. I'm going to be mostly using this quad today, but I did use one shade from this one. So this is called the Flowing Haze palette. And thank you Kaleidos for adding the names to these because the last quads I did didn't have the names. I'm gonna go ahead and just take this shade right here and this is all we're using from this palette but I can't wait to continue using it. So I'm taking my BK Beauty 201 brush and I'm just going to blend this and by the way I do have the Kaleidos Tone Activator on as my eye primer today. I love, love, love this eye primer. It's the best. And I'm just gonna blend this out on my outer corner and then everywhere else throughout the crease. And this is the perfect easy shade for any purple look. Kaleidos always kills it with their products and their collections. They're always so well thought out, very good quality. They really did it with this collection, just color story wise for what I like. So I'm really attracted to this collection, the eyeshadows in particular. So that's good for now. Then we're gonna pop into the the brighter one. So this is Glowing Iris. I'm gonna take this Sigma brush right here. This is a Dream Detailed Blending. I'm gonna take this Periwinkle-ish kind of shade. Now since these shades have more blue in them, they are a little harder to blend. You have to be a little careful. Not difficult to use, but just more difficult than something like the other palette, which has more of a grayer undertone, which makes it easier to blend. I'm gonna pat this down. As you can see, we just did my classic semi-winged out, blended out, darker in the outer corner look. So I'm just placing this down and then I'm gonna slowly blend it. I'm even gonna go as far as to wipe this on a towel so I have less products so we don't get too out of control here and just fuse this in. We will go back with this color, but she looks beautiful. And then with a Refer 14 brush, we're going into the darkest shade and I'm gonna circle this all in the 
outer corner. And you know what? This eye is behaving better. I said it was a little bit more difficult to blend. This eye is working out very nice, so I'm really happy about that. It's always the second eye that turns out looking better because I have a better idea of what I'm doing and how the shadows work. And then to get it softer, I'm gonna take that original brush that we used with the crease color. Then we're just gonna soften the edges. Next, I'm gonna take a blinged brush, E14, and we're gonna go into this shade right here. This is a great shade. It's not too powdery and it leaves still a good amount of pigment. And I'm just gonna put this on the eyelid. And if you want an all matte look, how pretty is this? But of course, I have to use Kaleidosis Shimmer because they have a really special formula in these quads. This formula was in the last quads too. I mean, really comparable to Pat McGrath if you ask me, and I'm going to just pop that all up in the inner corner and fade it out. So I applied that matte light purple color in the center of the lid since I am planning on fading this out. But this color that I'm putting on the eyelid right now has a lot of pigmentation, so it didn't need a base shade. It was just to help blend the fade. Isn't that gorgeous? And then once again, go back in with this shade, really blend it out. Okay, so we will be back with those palettes, but I wanna work on the eyeliner. It's perfect because Isam just launched new colors, like gemstone colors with their dual eyeliners. And they have this one, which is Luster and Amethyst. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the darker side right here. And I'm just gonna use this to line my upper lash line. And we will go ahead and use the lighter side in the waterline once we get there. But do you see how smooth this is applying? These are really good eyeliners. When I did bridal makeup every weekend, I had these liners in my kit just because they work out so easily. Look at that, I, no tugging on the eye. So if you don't like tugging on the eye, this is great for mature lids. The new colors that they have are gemstone colors. They're so pretty, gorgeous. I'm gonna come back to this dark shade once I have concealer on to do a little mini inner corner wing. But these eyeliners are super underrated. You saw how they glid across the lash line here. Oh, so far so good, you guys. Now in terms of under eyes, we're really gonna test this Makeup Forever palette. So I've mixed this shade and this shade, which are two peachy colors. And I'm gonna start off by using these as color correctors, just cause I don't know the true coverage of this product. So you can see they blend out really easily. I always worry about cream palettes like this that they're gonna be dry and hard to work out, but this is not the case with this palette. So this is gonna be the main source of coverage for the under eyes. I wanted something more salmon-y, especially since we have purple eyeshadow on, it's really important that you color correct so that you don't look really tired because of the fallout and all of that. So something peachy like that. And then I'm gonna go in with the shade that I used for foundation. Now for foundation, I mixed these two because I'm a little darker than this, which makes this perfect for my under eyes. So I'm gonna get just a wee bit. I've learned I need a lot less than I think I do with this. So I'm going to take Sigma Dream Color Brush and put more of this skin skin tone color just right on top, keeping the layer really thin. And then I'm gonna go in with the BK Beauty and Angie Hot and Flashy brush, which by the way, this set is on sale for 20% off right now in celebration of like the first anniversary and over 100,000 being sold, which is incredible, which by the way, this set itself is incredible. I use the brushes from this set every single day. This is one of my favorite concealer brushes. It's the A506. So definitely jump on that if you want to try because this really is a set that's worth it. So that'll be fine for the under eyes today. This isn't the best concealer for the under eyes. I feel like it looks a little drying, a little heavy on the under eyes, but in a pinch, I think it's fine. If you just are trying to get that five minute kind of makeup look and you want it all in one palette, go ahead and use this as a concealer. You won't be mad. It's not bad. That's perfect. That brightened up the eyes. And Laura Mercier sent over this secret brightening powder for the under eyes. I'm really curious about this. I have it in the shade one. So let's try it out. It comes in this tiny adorable packaging. Okay, listen to this. Oof. Mm. I'm just gonna use my refer brush to apply this. So it's very white. It says it's brightening. I don't know if I want it this brightening. Very lightweight. Definitely has a blurred finish to it. Oh, that's pretty. Let's get a little heavier with it. I like 
powder on the under eyes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the center of my face because this is the only powder that I have for setting today. And it definitely did brighten a little bit. It definitely is more on the translucent side, but like I wouldn't use this color if you have a deeper complexion. It worked for me and honestly, I think it looks really good. You have to be careful though with these types of products because if you are using a little bit of a drier product underneath, like a drier concealer or foundation, powder like this will emphasize that dryness. So I'm starting to see that it looks a little dry, but I knew the makeup forever was gonna be dry. So I'm not mad at it. And I actually, I keep coming back to this. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with it. I've decided I wanted to contour just a little bit. Nothing crazy. So I'm gonna take this shade and this shade and mix them together just to get a little bit on the outskirts of my face. Probably could have used less of the lighter shade, right? Yeah, I know it's like unsanitary to dip this back into the palette. I've given up on maybe using this for clients. It's mine now. I like it too much. So I don't care if I'm being a little unsanitary here. Just a little bit because I didn't put too much foundation out here. So I figured we'll just do that. And that's okay. That's all I want. Just a little bit. I'm going to use this BK Beauty 106 brush. And we're going to blend it out. Remember, a little goes a long way with this. Okay, that's perfect. Because remember, I didn't put too much foundation or coverage over in that area. And I wanted to have something before I put on powder products over top. But yeah, you can definitely get a full face with this palette. There's even blush shades that I'm not even going to touch today. But I'm going to continue to use that palette because, wow, the versatility. Let's finish up the eyes before I get into bronzer and blush. I'm just going to do super Simple. I'm gonna pop into this palette right here and I'm gonna take this shade and we're gonna run her along the lower lash line and then we're gonna take the darkest shade smoke it out keep it on the outer part of the eye and then I'm actually just gonna take this lilac shade on a small brush and keep that on the inner half of the lower lash line and then of course we got to go into the special shade and I'm not worried about packing it on that's why I put the base color down I just want the glimmers to be spread out just like that that's perfect. Okay, so we're done with the eyeshadow itself. Hopping back into the Luster and Amethyst eyeliner from Isam. We're gonna go into the lighter side. Put this in the waterline. It's like a shimmery light pink. I don't like these as much in the waterline as I do just apply directly to skin. But this opened up the eyes nicely and it glitter cross really nice. So nice that it kept gliding onto the skin. <laughs> so I'm just gonna re-darken that. We're gonna go back to the face. I have some powder, bronzer, blush, and highlight. So I got this in a PR package from Trixie Cosmetics, whom I've never tried before. And this is the Flower Power Bronzer. This is like kimchi chic beauty and that the packaging is just so adorable. And here's what it looks like. And I'm just gonna use this to lightly set the outer parts of my face. I'm excited to try more from this brand. I have a couple other items that I get to test out. This is in the shade Darling Daisy, by the way. So I'm gonna focus it mostly on this shade and then get just a little bit of the darker shade and just a little bit of this. This is a Sigma F10, by the way. And since I do have that cream bronzer down already that I used from the Makeup Forever palette, I'm just gonna use this to set today. So I can't say too much on this bronzer so far, but I will keep you updated in my speed reviews. I think it did a nice job though. Don't have anything bad to say quite yet. Gonna mix these two, get the jawline. Nice. I do think I like this though. So I do have a different highlighter that I'm gonna use, but I'm just gonna sneak this right here on this side. <gasps> That's pretty. I like that it's all in one. This is quite versatile. Okay, it's not like my favorite highlighter in the world, but it's nice. I do have a different highlighter that I plan on using, so I'm just gonna keep this alone for now. Now for blush, a while back, a few weeks ago, I received the ColourPop and High School Musical Collection, and the blushes in this collection are stunning. So I wanted to play with one of them. These definitely fill the nostalgia in me. I'm gonna use the shade Wildcats, which is this lighter shade. I just think it's the one that's gonna go the best with my look because these are quite pink and bold against what would be the makeup. Uh, I love ColourPop pressed blushes. I know a ton of people weren't excited about this collection. I still want to use them. I'm excited about this collection. I was pumped, to be honest. 
And I'm just going to put this, oh, this is really subtle. This is gonna be really nice if you have a fair complexion, but it's really great for this look because it is so subtle and this eye look is not so subtle. I wish it was a little bit cooler. I feel like it would go with the eye look, but the whole collection itself runs pretty warm, so that's okay. We'll just make it work, but they have really great pressed blushes. I'm very happy with that. And then like I said, with powder highlight, I did have a new one that I wanted to try. So this is from Ciate, and this is the Glow 2 Highlighter in the shade Moon Dust. It looked really pretty, so I wanted to give it a try. Ciate has sent me a lot of products in PR recently, so I've been meaning to try out a number of their stuff because I got a lot to try. I've definitely tried Ciate out in the past. Pretty, this is actually more subtle than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be quite blinding, but it does build up actually. That's pretty. I'm going to put a little bit more blush over top, I think. I'll put it up over the Trixie highlight over here just to be even. And I want to use this as my inner corner highlight as well. We're just gonna take a little bit of it, pop it right here. It has a subtle, subtle grayness to it, which looks great with the cool toned look that I have going on. But I think it's gonna be pretty picky, which looks it looks good with. But when I do a cool tone look, I like this. I think it sits a little prettier than the Trixie. Not an all-time favorite again, but super solid for sure. So we do have a new mascara. This is one that I've heard good things about, so I'm excited. This is the new Tower 28 mascara. It's called the Make Waves Mascara, and I have it in the black shade. So let's go ahead and give this baby a try. Now there's a 90% chance that because this is the first use, I'm not going to like it. I don't like mascaras the first time I use them. But let's see. I have pretty short, sparse, thin lashes, so I'm a pretty good judge of some mascaras, but it usually takes a few uses for me to get that thought on a mascara because once they dry up a little bit, I prefer them. Have heard super good things about this mascara though. I'm gonna use the curve to lift. Oh, it's building up nice. Okay. For a first use, this is pretty impressive. I'm gonna assume it gets better from here once it dries out a little bit. But I really like how that made my upper lashes work. Because it's curved, I'm struggling a little bit on the lower lashes. So let me pop on a second coat. I'd be careful though, because it's giving a lot of volume. Hopefully it doesn't get clumpy. Hmm, this gave my lashes some lip, which is super rare because my lashes literally just naturally point straight down and I didn't even curl them. Oh, this is still TBD because it is my first use. And mascaras, I'm not good at judging by character on initial impressions, but I'm impressed. I don't love the way it makes my lower lashes look, which I usually deem more important because I wear falsies all the time. But this made my upper lashes look so good that I almost don't want to put false lashes on. I'm going to because I have a new pair that I want to try, but I've heard good things about this and I'm seeing good things about it. I'm actually really impressed with this. I was not expecting to be. Wow. Okay, that's exciting. Now for lashes, I'm gonna pop these on off camera, but Velour launched these new plant fiber lashes. And so they sent over a pair and these look really beautiful. I don't know if there's a name to this style. Cloud Nine. So I'm gonna pop these on and then pull out some lip colors, but I'm loving how I'm looking right now. Here are the Velour lashes. They look good. I love these. They have a natural curl to them. These are beautiful. They're soft, they're wispy, but they still Still have that volume and dramaticness. Ah, okay, love these lashes. Everything's going really good today. And then I also did my little inner corner wing with the Isom liner. And then now for lips. So Bare Minerals has some new le lasting lip liners. So I have the shade Cherish Rose that I'm gonna go ahead and give a go today. Packaging looks really sleek on it. And by the way, this gave very temporary results. I felt like for a little bit my lips were looking more plump, but not really. They're like back <laughs> to the their normal size, but they are nicely hydrated. Ooh, I like this. I love a fresh lip pencil. They're so sharp and easy to use. So my lips are so overly hydrated, it's really hard for me to tell the actual true consistency of this. Oh no, it is actually quite creamy. It looks like it'd be drier because it's a sharpenable pencil with the wood, but it actually is quite creamy. And there's pros and cons to creamy versus dry. I normally prefer a happy medium, but I'm shocked because normally these wooden pencils aren't so creamy. So that's good for the base. 
We'll see on longevity. I'll update you in speed reviews. I'm gonna try a new liquid lipstick from Trixie, and we're gonna use one of their lip glosses as well. So this is the liquid lipstick in the shade June Bug, and it just looks really good for today's look, and the packaging is adorable. It's like a little heart. Let's try her out. Mm, smells like vanilla frosting. Okay. Very thin. I like that in this case it's on the thinner side because I wanted to blend it in with the lip liner more. It's kind of messy because I just got some all over my teeth because it is so liquidy. It's kind of hard to control so you definitely need a lip liner with this. Otherwise it's going to be a little bit harder to get a defined edge on your lips. But the thinness was nice in this case. Now I do have a gloss and again Trixie sent over this crazy lip gloss set. It's in the same heart packaging and I'm just going to quickly grab something but doesn't this look so adorable so it contains seven different lip glosses and let's go ahead and do the purple shade in prism we're gonna get real literal with it it has some blue sparkles it's really pretty not too much of a scent Ooh, wow that actually had more pigment than i thought the purple is really showing through you can feel a little bit of grit with the glitters but it has a nice thickness to it where i can tell it's gonna last a long time i'd say definitely not as slick as like a fenty but I think it's gonna last a while. A sticky gloss isn't always a bad thing, you know? It does help with the longevity. Oh wow, okay, I mean, that's the makeup that was fast. I love this lip combo though. It looks really pretty. Maybe a little bit more pink than I wanted for the eyes, but whatever. Okay, let me pull myself together and then I'll kind of round up the best of in today's video. So here is the final look and I have to say everything looks really good. The only thing is I do feel like the Makeup Forever was just a wee bit dry on my skin. But I used my Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Facial Mist, which always adds a nice hydration to the skin, and it looks gorgeous now. So just a little setting spray, and then my skin looks great. So I actually don't think there is a single product in here that I used and tested today where I'm like, mm, could do without. Like, nothing here today was underwhelming at all. It's an overly successful video. I would say the standouts, though, this Shantikai Sheer Glow rose face tint stunning high quality such a beautiful glow to the skin while feeling like skincare that's great even though i say that this makeup forever palette looked a little dry on my skin it was easily fixable and it just works so well it's so compact i'm really excited to continue using this and testing it i haven't even really scratched the surface of what you can do with this palette so this stood out to me of course the kaleidos quads immediately in love i mean i knew i would be not surprised the Isom liner worked really beautiful. Super impressed with the Tower 28 so far. Can't wait to continue using it. Impressed with the Bare Minerals lip liner so far. I guess the can do without would be the Trixie liquid lipstick because it's it was a bit too watery for me. The Too Faced lip injection just didn't have the impact that I was hoping for. I don't know. Everything was really good. Even these two. We're fine. So I pretty much recommend so far pretty much everything in this video. Everything worked out incredible and mesh really well together. Now if you're new to my channel and you want the tea on these products in the long run, make sure you're subscribed because all of these in the next few weeks will be featured in my speed reviews videos. This is going in my speed reviews drawer so I will continue to use these products and I will update you on them. But so far first impressions, Everything was great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I will catch you all in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.